Uh, let's start from where we are in Singapore. Singapore has invested in ICT from very early days back in the late 70s, early 80s and through a series of very structured initiatives they have built upon the success of the preceding initiative to kind of wire up this entire island to ensure that you have adequate uh, skill manpower in ICT and that, that was uh, no mean feat in the 80s if you remember uh, and uh, basically to focus on areas that would help the economy of the city-state you know, as it progresses forward. So I think Singapore is one of the leading ones and this is obviously borne out in various uh, studies uh, on, on e-government and uh, national ICT as well. Uh, Malaysia has taken a slightly different tack of building what they call super corridors, you know, the multimedia super corridor, the brainchild of Dr. Mahathir, previous premier and all that. And I think the idea was twofold. One, to uh, kind of centralize the uh, federal ministries and agencies in one location, Putrajaya, and basically to, to, to link them up. And secondly, to create a kind of a, a, a super technology park to attract technology companies to come and invest and, and build infrastructure there. And uh, they have then duplicated these super corridors into you know, the northern corridor in Penang, the eastern corridor in Sabah and Sarawak, that kind of thing. So they have, that's the, th the tag that they are taking. Korea, as I mentioned earlier, has taken a different track of uh, investing very early on and they had the foresight of investing very early on in the high-speed broadband infrastructure. Uh, at a time when, to be honest, the business case was hard to justify, they plunk in a lot of investment, they plunk in a lot of resources to build up the national infrastructure for Korea and that sure, sure enough created new industries, new jobs, new employment uh, for the country that would otherwise not have happened and because of that they, they took a lead in uh, things like online gaming uh, and, some, and other, other areas as well. Uh, Taiwan, as we spoke about earlier, uh, the government has been uh, has been very pro uh, pro industry in the sense of creating uh, uh, manufacturing or tech parks around the island in uh, Sinju, for instance, in Kaohsiung, for instance, uh, about building uh, technology parks which are already uh, IT enabled so that uh, new investors coming in to set up plants will be able to leverage on that infrastructure rather than rebuild their own. And basically that's the whole theme of creating an environment that is business friendly and that would basically uh, allow you to set up your businesses and get, uh, you know, get, get going quickly. Other countries are in, which are more in the developing sphere, the, the Vietnams, the Indonesias, for instance, the Philippines, for example, are creating uh, uh, various mega projects basically to link up the country. Uh, they, are, they are always national uh, connectivity projects in uh, Indonesia, in Philippines, in, in Vietnam. Uh, I think because of the state of the industry, sometimes uh, they, they need to proceed carefully because they need to balance between the uh, readiness of the populace with the systems that they are, they are creating. So each country has, needs to proceed at its own pace basically. Uh, we are helping, uh, for instance, I'm helping personally the government of Vietnam as an advisor to them to, to work on their master plans for Hanoi, Da Nang, Ho Chi Minh City, that kind of thing, to basically put in place uh, the different uh, necessary infrastructure and access points that would enable businesses and citizens to benefit from the IT infrastructure. And believe me, even within the country of Vietnam itself, the, 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 the rate at which the, uh, each of the projects proceed will be different de depending on the needs of the society there. So I think that's kind of a, a, in a nutshell, very quick, very quickly, a scan of the environment in Asia. Uh, of course, I haven't mentioned uh, China and India, which are huge, uh, obviously huge uh, powerhouses. Uh, and, and China, really, you cannot look at China as one country because you, you can talk about the coastal cities and they are very developed, they have very advanced uses of ICT, and you have, you have talked about the uh, more rural the inner, inner regions which are still plagued with the problems of connectivity, if not even water and electricity and roads and so forth. So different states of maturity. In India, I was working in India a couple of years ago and uh, it's a very decentralized model because uh, India has uh, m many states under the chief ministers of the states uh, and a lot of the projects are very autonomous. But from a federal perspective, what India has done is uh, they have coordinated this development of what they call a statewide area network, a SWAN, S-W-A-N, whereby from, uh, from New Delhi, it connects up to the 
the, the state capitals and from the state capitals it connects up to what they call uh, citizen service centres. They've, they've created some 100,000 citizen service centres in the rural areas of uh, India and each citizen service centre is supposed to serve the villages surrounding it. You know, so basically, it's a huge country, geographically very challenging. But I think this is a, 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 a very iconic project that the world is looking at, especially the, like the developing world is looking at, to see how it succeeds or what the challenges it faces to try to connect up rural population. As you know, is a very challenging task.